I remember, and I told Shannon this to her face. I was like, your father, seeing your father, made me for the first time in America be proud to be an Asian man. What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 562, with today's guest, Mr. Chen Tang. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host on the show. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. And I love martial arts. And that's why everything we do here at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts. What does that mean? Well, if you want to know what that means, go to whistlekick.com, poke around, see all the things that we're working on, all the projects and the products. Yes, there's a store there. We sell some stuff. It helps cover some of the expenses. That's kind of an important thing. Have a sustainable business, or at least try to. And if you see something over there that you like, if you want to make a purchase, use the code PODCAST15. It saves you 15% off. Saves you 15% off. That's probably not the best language, but we're going to roll with it. It'll save you 15%. There we go. But if you want to check out the show, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio gets its own website. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Super creative. I do all the naming, if you can't tell. We bring you two shows a week, and the goal of the show is to connect and educate and entertain you, the traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to show your appreciation... Of course, you can make a purchase, like I said, or you could share this episode or follow us on social media or check out a book on Amazon or leave a review or support the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Throw us a couple bucks a month. We'll throw you some exclusive content. Throw us a few more dollars. We're going to give you access to more. We release exclusive audio, video, books, all kinds of stuff over there. So check it out. Consider helping us. Today's guest is a name that you may recognize. He has been involved in some projects that are being incredibly well-received. And in fact, as we were talking today, two of the projects that he's been involved in have been nominated for some pretty substantial awards. And in fact, as I was talking with somebody on his team just before the show, he's the only person in common between the two. Now, it's true he was willing to come on the show to promote his projects. I'm not going to name because I want to let that unfold organically. But the conversation we had was anything but a typical media appearance. We had a great conversation. And to be frank, we talked for a good 20 minutes after we closed the show. This man is a good man, a exemplary martial artist and the type of person that I was just happy to get to know better. Now, one bit of caution. We're not editing the language in this episode, not because it's particularly filthy or because there are powerful stories that require using foul language, but because it just didn't feel right. And that might sound odd as I say it in the intro, but I've got a feeling as we roll through, you'll see what I'm talking about. In this conversation, we talk about everything from philosophy and acting and, of course, martial arts to, well, instead of spoiling it all, I'll just let it happen for you. So here we go with my conversation with Chen Tang. Cool. All right. Now we can talk shit all, all about <laughs> we'll talk, it. Okay. Sure, yeah. Well, I, 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 she'll probably tell you, and, and, and I, it may not be the first time, I guess that she was your mom, just the way she was talking about you. When she was talking about the awards, it was just, it was so, she was so proud Oh yeah, she is and it was like it was really it was really sweet. Yeah, she she's like uh she's sort of like I, I joke that she's like my LA mom. Um she's like a cool aunt, you know, like not like okay. overbearing like a mom. She's yeah. just like, Yeah, I just do what you do what you do and uh you know, you're like family. You know, we've we've been together for now gosh, six years now, you know, and uh she uh, her background is actually she has over 20 years of experience doing like high end concerts like MGM Caesars Palace stuff like that to like bring over like Wang Li Home and you know like Jay Chow and stuff over to the states and uh, oh, cool. basically just do like cross Asia you know and concerts and she just was the producer for that for like 20 plus years and now she and then recently uh she was like you know what I, I love film and i all my friends are in film i am gonna basically help you manage your asia stuff because it's a very different world uh for and, and we need a team that because because I'm, I'm i'm chinese so like we you know I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm cross cross country 
So right. she like it, basically she 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 only had she's only you know basically helps manage the career for like uh, three or four clients and um, fortunate to be able to say like like two of her 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 clients are like they, they have like multiple emmys and then <laughs> our and her other client who's my age is in taiwan and china right now he's starring on a, this netflix show uh right now that's that's on so netflix. she's the common denominator she she's, should be getting the award uh, yeah she is it wasn't it. for her she's I, like she's just kills i mean oh. it's it's like the best uh the best person that you could ever work with you know and how how did you get connected with her um so the story goes that you know this was back when she was still doing um like concerts and every now and then they just need like a host like a bilingual host so um she found me through her cousin who's a casting director in new york and and i know her cousin and he recommended me to her and then like it just sort of blossomed from there you know it wasn't a planned thing it was just like when i first met her i thought it was just gonna be like oh yeah nice to meet you you know i'll just do this thing for you and and then I was like, oh, I actually need this, you know? <laughs> so, so um, yeah, it was, it's, it's been great, you know? Oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. So cool that you, you found her. Well, if, if it's okay with you, I kind of want to, you know, we'll go back and, and clip a little bit, but I kind of want to keep that stuff that we just talked about in. Yeah, please. You know, she's you good with that. And yeah, we can, ju- we can just keep rolling because, you know. Do you want me to stop she- my video, by the way? just so that there's a path. ideally i mean we're gonna you know we're <laughs> gonna suppress that later <laughs> like an ugly face out of my out of my screen cool uh, right. they, they, they don't they don't generally give awards to ugly people <laughs> i don't know i think all the best actors like are interesting looking so i'm always thinking like well i think i'm a character actor i don't got what it takes to be the the, the good looking like heartthrob but i i got the acting you know <laughs> so <laughs> Well, what about me? I'm I'm over here running a podcast. What does that say? I, I Five hundred something it's... episodes deep on an audio only show. Yeah, I think you just got a wonderful voice. That's what it is. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> takes a takes a lot of practice, as as anything does, as as you know. Of course. Uh, but let's let's dig into it. Let's just yeah, you know. And normally we do this stuff kind of pre-show so i'm I'm just going to roll into it the audience is going to get to hear some uh, some old i'm going to tell you for the first time honestly in, in five and a half years yep. we have a saying on this show that the best stuff's on the edges so don't be afraid to wander don't be afraid of tangents i'll pull you back if you get too far out there okay but really i, I you know i'm especially aware when we have someone on who's done a, a bunch of media that you get the same questions over and over again and yes, and yes i don't like know, right. asking the same questions Oh yeah, this is gonna be a cool interview then, because uh, there's some some there's like, I, I think it was like Groundhog Day for a while for the last few months, you know, um, in a good and way, that's, in a good way, yeah, but still, right, and and a lot of that is that you know we're talking about martial arts content, and a lot of the people interviewing, I'm I'm you, interviewing you, I'm sure aren't martial artists. They don't have the nuance. They don't train. They don't know. That's right. Yeah. The community, the industry. You know, I, I've been I've been pretty lucky with some of the, the folks that I've had the chance to talk to and, and been approached, you know, we've done, we've been part of the media tour for a number of shows as they've rolled out, you know, ba- uh, we got to do some stuff for Badlands. We got to do some, you know, sh- um, HBO reached out and, and offered Shannon Lee to come on the show before oh, wow. Warrior even launched. Yeah. So I, I'd like to say that we're doing something right. Yeah. So you know, when you, when you have, now. You know, when you have a real passion and, and, and it comes out and like, you know, there's some things that, you know, people ask me about, obviously, like Warrior, they, they, a lot of people, we've been feeling a lot of love, but a lot of people are really like enamored by the action scenes. And I'm like, you know, there's so much that goes into it. And I could explain it all day to somebody who doesn't really know like anything about stunts or um, martial arts, but it wouldn't quite make any sense, you know? So they're just like, they see the whole product, but we can get into like detail and stuff. They assume that, you know, a five minute action scene, maybe that takes, oh, okay. You know, so they bring people out and they, they rehearse it a couple times, you know, like they would lines mm-hmm. and then you roll and, you know, maybe you get it the third or fourth time and, you know, mm-hmm. there's an hour and you take a break mm-hmm. and they don't yeah. realize, they don't realize how, how deep and how long, how many days or weeks that's right. That five yeah. minute scene can take. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When did you get started in in stunt work let's talk about the physical side because it sounds like that's that's something that 
you know, just the way you talked about it, you're passionate about, do you, now, what was your it, first stunt? Let me, let me ask you that. What was the first stunt you did on film? You want to, you, would you believe that, you know, I cannot sit here with a straight face and say like, oh my gosh, I can't sit here and, and have worked with these like world-class people and say like, I am anywhere near like a stunt person or a martial artist. Like, you know, I have some experience in martial arts. I grew up like uh, doing about seven years of Wushu Kung Fu, you know, here and there, right? And I've always been an active dude, but these people have de dedicated their entire lives to it. And um, people like, you know, Brett Chan and, and Johnny Yang on, on the stunt and their stunt team and all the wonderful mm -hmm. stunt people that, that, that we got to work with. Um, and, and, and also in, you know, Mulan as well, but, um, let me just start off this interview by saying, um, I am a complete novice when it comes to this stuff. I really am. And they basically carried me and taught me so much and basically made, uh, made me look good. Okay. And so, so by cat, by, by, by being associated with like, by being sort of like near them, I have, you know, people have assumed that like, oh my gosh, like, you know, you must be a martial art. You must be like a stunt, ex like groups experienced dude, which I am not. I am just an actor that moves well, that um, mm. can, can really, uh, that, that has some martial arts background and, 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 you know, and I'm not afraid to get into it. So let's just start with that. Let's get that out of the way. All right. And, and, and I'm being very real, you know? Um, so, but so, so to answer your question, actually, believe it or not, you know, I would say the first real stunt sequence I've, I, 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 I've done on, um, any kind of like, uh, uh, television or film was actually, believe it or not, it was Mulan. Mulan was my first like real thing where we did extensive really? stunts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I did some, you know, like, here and there, you know, you do some stuff here and there. Like, uh, if you get got to get punched on camera, if you've got to like go through things on camera, but I can't count that as like, you know, when we actually were in the stunt gym rehearsing and, you know, they do the previs mm -hmm. and all these things, right. And you, you, you learn it. So Mulan was definitely, it was, it was the first one. And, and, and I got quite lucky to, to work with just world-class people like that for my first experience. It's, it's gotta be powerful. And, Mm. Was it something you looked forward to do, to doing, or was it something that maybe, because you're, you're doing a really good job of articulating this this line, and we've had a number of stunt performers on the show, and we've had actors on the show, mm -hmm. and I might be getting the episode wrong, but I think it was um, Sherman Augustus. I don't know if you know him. He he was on Badlands, mm -hmm. and we had a, a pretty good conversation again, if I'm, my memory is serving, talking about the difference between an actor who does stunts and a stuntman who does acting. And it sounds like you, you've clearly defined who you are. Yeah. You're an actor who's doing some stunt work. Yeah. But was I, it something that you said, Hey, maybe someday I'll get to work in that way. I think, um, well, you know, when I, when I got into this acting thing, you know, it was always, it, I don't know why it ended up that way. I was just always just like, I'm enamored with my craft, just as, you know, stunt people and martial artists are enamored with their craft. But um, always my, my, my focus had always been like, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm an actor. And the actor, my actor worldview is, I will do whatever it is to be in the life of this character. And you know, if I'm playing a soldier, soldiers need to learn how to fight. Soldiers need to learn how to, you know, if it, you know, you know, learn tactics and all these things. That is something that this person would know. And you know, for for uh, someone like Hong on Warrior, it's like I am a I'm a I'm a fighter. You know, this is what I do mm. as part of my life. You cannot separate the two. So that's what I always go through. You know, um, whenever I'm, 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 I'm picking up any kind of like stunt work, I was really actually pretty nervous about it, to be honest, um, when I first started with Milan, because it was so new and there was a lot, I mean, like, it, you know, you know, you're in like 10 kilo armor <laughs> and you have, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot to learn, you know? And for me, I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to learn this and, and. 
however I feel about it, I'm going to put it into the character. Maybe my character in 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 in, mm. in Mulan was like, oh wow, I'm I'm really nervous about how to learn how to use this sword. You know, I might cut myself, right? And and all these things. So it's a it's a wonderful layer that I don't think that I separate very much from from the life of the character. I don't just layer it on. In other words, does that make sense? It does. It does yeah. that that anxiety that you had stepping and doing that stunt work? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that doesn't pop up for you often. That anxiety pops up for me more often than I would like to admit. Really? Because, yeah, because the thing is, um, you know, with with the thing with you know, you're doing a scene as an actor. It's like, okay, you are feeling these things emotionally, but when you do an action scene. If you do a stunt thing, you will feel it physically. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> does that make sense? Like, it does. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things I remember being on um, Warrior, and I remember doing uh, one of our fight scenes, and I remember Brett Chan, our amazing stunt coordinator, and he and he was just like. You know, I was doing this move where it was like a, a sort of a flying knee into somebody. And it was a, a sort of a, quite a long jump and I had to really go for it, you know. And the guy's got a pad and everything. And he's finally, he just pulled me aside. And he was like, Chen, you got to kick him. You got to kick him. Like you really literally have, I mean, you know, you can, the the the, the intention's got to be there, but you got to make contact. You can't be afraid of it. And 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 I realized that I was like, yeah, you got to commit and follow through because, of course, you know, you, you don't want to like, you know, he's like, yeah, of course, I get it. You don't want to hurt him, but this is their job. And, you know, because you do not want to hurt him because you have a good heart, these people will have to do it again and again because you didn't pull, you know, and then they're going to get tired and then they can get hurt. So you really got to follow through and to go there and put another like, you know, body onto another human being. I think all martial arts, it's, it's sort of like that, that whole thing with like a punch, you know, you got to follow through, you got to go through the guy. And, um, that, that thing took, uh, took a little, it didn't took a, it didn't take a long time for me to kind of get my head around, but it really did. Um, that, that was one of the big things at first because we're just not used to doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds a lot like the way I would imagine acting you're you, the way you described having to wrap your mind around throwing that kick and yep. you have to commit you have to put yourself into it you have to make it real that's yep. how i would imagine acting to be Ab absolutely um you know doing stunt work taught me so much about acting too because you know we as you know actors like it's an imaginary reality but but if you're doing it right and you're really in it like you really come in go through with it those feelings are real, you know? <laughs> so like you, you mm. get hit, you get hit and you take hits and you get hits. And, and, and that, that was, that was one of the, that's, that's one of those things. There's a lot of crossover. It really is. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. You mentioned Wushu yes. and Wushu as an art. Anybody who knows Wushu knows that it's, it's geared for presentation, for competition. Yes. There's, there's a, a solid, I, I would call it an element of acting within it. Yeah. In the way that it's presented. That's right. Did that's right. that fall in? I mean, did 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 the wushu were you able to draw on some of that experience as you started working this stunt stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because um, you know, I, I learned wushu as well as like the, the actual grappling aspect of it. So, so, so as well as like Southern, Southern Kung Fu, which is actually mm. quite, you know, it, it doesn't look that great, but it's quite effective. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's very low. It's very centered, it's very grounded, a lot of short explosive bursts kind of thing. And I always gravitated towards that. Um, for the Wushu side, you know, I, I spent some time with the Northern, you know, long fist, but it's, it, it just never really took hold for me because I was never one of those guys that was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go into this competition to like show. I rather just be and use, you know? And yeah, does, does, does that make sense? And, and yeah. so that actually, but, but when I, when I went and did the stunts, I was like, oh, this is actually extremely, extremely useful. It's only because like, you know, Brett was saying like, Chen, you're very fast. You're, you're, you're quite fluidic, 
you know, with your, with your movements. And I was like, you know, a lot of that has to come from like, you know, years of just, just doing, um, th- I think there's just something about, about Wushu and, and Kung Fu in general. It's a very flowing, it's, it's all about flow and, and it just links the, the body in a really, really interesting way. So it really helped a lot with the stunts. Mm, nice. I, I have this saying, if, if you slow down all martial arts enough, if you give people free form movement, and ask them to move really, really slowly. It all looks like Kung Fu because their their mind starts to move fast enough that they can move their body in multiple ways simultaneously, yeah, which yeah. You know, seems to be a hallmark of most of the Kung Fu styles that I've witnessed. Yeah, and you know, a little bit of doubt. Back, looking back at like traditional Kung Fu, I'm talking about traditional real, real ass Kung Fu, you know, um, I think Kung Fu nowadays sort of gets a sort of bad rap because of like, it's evolved into this sort of like, you know, it's, it's been, been around forever. So like, it's, you know, it's going to evolve into different branches and some of them is very presentational and artsy and whatnot and showy. But the way I always looked about it was, and, and, and following Bruce Lee's example, you know, Kung Fu is like very, it was a combat art, you know, this, this, this evolved out of real things like people had to protect themselves and kill people you know so mm-hmm. that right there has always been like i'm i'm a bit of a like a traditional hearted guy you know when i when i look back onto those things it's like all of this is expression of human movement and for a very specific reason and 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 that kind of mindset was very um prevalent in our show warrior that because one of the things I really liked about our fight scenes on Warrior is not only did it tell a good story, but also like all of none of the movements were really just for sort of like, you know, show everything was sort of like, every, I'm talking about every little movement was intentional. And that was a big difference because I was like, that you know there's a reason why i would move this way and that's what brett said he's like there's a reason why like you know you would you want to go here not there and and you got to make sure that uh, you clock that person before you go you know just like in just like that it has an intention so that's that's one of the things i like you know and you hit the nail on the head for me for what i love about that show is that in most martial arts television and cinema there is a hard line between story and the fights. Yeah. And if you go back to, you know, the, the old stuff, the old Hong Kong films, you, you see that, you know, the story is just kind of an excuse to get to the next fight scene. Yeah. Whereas in Warrior and, and in a good movie, like to me, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, mm-hmm. the fight scenes are continuing to tell the story. Correct. Yeah. And, and that, that, all that credit goes to, again, back to Brett Chan and his team, but also to the writers. Um, Jonathan Tropper, our showrunner, is himself a martial artist and he has years of experience in martial arts. And he actually, one of the things he said to me when I first got on the show, he was like, yeah, I love to write all the, he writes it in. He writes the beats mm. in. Like if you read the script, it's like, you know, we'll, we'll change it a little bit. Maybe in the previous stuff doesn't, doesn't quite fit or work for the, the, the character or the dynamic, but he literally writes it in. He, it's like, you know, Leary does this thing on this thing and for this reason. And you can tell why, you know, he's thought through it all. So, so a lot of that was, it, it was such a blessing to have that, um, that level of specificity and detail and it really really shows on the show Mm. does that as as an actor does that give you enough space to still find your 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 spot and put your character forward if everything's written out that way oh very much very much um for me i actually am a big believer in the power of limitation power of constraints Mm. Because when you constrain something, you actually have a framework to kind of bounce off of. If you just actually, like, if you just, it's sort of like saying, like, oh, you know, what do you want to eat? You know, like, you're here in LA, like, what do you want to eat? Like, I'm like, well, tell me what you feel like. How do you feel? Like, what kind of cuisine? You know, it's, it's almost like too much. So, so actually when they, when they, when they give you that kind of framework and, and, and by that point, you're like, 
you're so dialed in with your character. You, you, you know your life the way I, if, you know, you've done your preparation, you, you really know how I see the world. You can actually use that sort of as creative juice. You know, like, well, why would I, you know, uh, for, just to give you a, a concrete example, it was, I had decided that, um, Hong on the show is very circular. Uh, you know, I have a chain, you know, this is a distance weapon, you know, you can really like get, take on multiple people at a time, but it's also like just the, the style that we had, we had found, uh, me and Brett, we had found was just this sort of like a flowing kind of circular thing that was, you know, purposely designed to be very, very different from both Andrew Koji's style and, you know, Jason Tobin's style. And, and, and there was a reason for that. And by doing that, like, we were like finding like a lot of this, the, these like sort of like, um, um, chokes and, 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 and wrapping up attacks with the, with that chain. And I was like, you know, that gives me such an interesting way of seeing the world as Hong because it's like, what would it be like to always think as a default to sort of move around things rather than just to attack them directly? what does that give me as this life you know like i can bring that into like almost every scene that i'm doing every acting scene and, and so so it's things like that that would that would that we would talk about and um that that you know we me as the actor would be like oh you know what on this mo on this point and this in this in this moment maybe i need to sort of like get around him in this way and it's not in the script does that make sense it does. Yeah. It does. In, in fact, what you're saying reminds me of something that I've often said. I, I'm, I love martial arts. I love every aspect of martial arts, but I'm most passionate about forms. And I've found as I've progressed saying that the, the most, the individualization in forms, the, the difference between a, a great form and a not so great form, it's the space between the movements. Mm. anybody can throw that kick anybody can throw that kick well mm. but what you do before and after that kick and it's what what i'm hearing you say about what you're bringing to the character and and the way you see your role reminds me a lot of that yes because it's your personal truth you know this is your personal expression of mm. this movement because you know we're all built into different bodies right you know the human body is is, is extremely dynamic but in any space of time, we can only move how we move and how you move naturally is sort of um, unique. It's a unique fingerprint to yourself. And so you, you can use that as a starting point of where you want to go. And, 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 and that is, that's that, that, that attention to detail of the individual is a big reason why Brett would say something like, you know, if you put a silhouette to all the characters in the show, you should be able to tell who they are just based on how they move. That was that was his that was his overriding intention, and I, I never forgot that. And I loved that attention to detail. It's because it is really based on you know you call it the space between moves, but yes, it, that that's correct because how you choose to move in that next moment is unique to you. And I, maybe I would approach it different, right? And 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 that's what what makes something. Like, oh, that's, 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 that's your unique way of moving, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Has your, how do I want to ask this question? Has your time spent doing this martial arts work on camera? Has that changed anything in the way you look at, let's say, martial arts in general? You know, if you were to go back, I don't know how much time you spend training. I'm guessing you're really busy. So probably not a ton. Yeah. But if you stepped in. And, and you did a couple of, you know, you did an hour of, of wushu training. Mm -hmm. Would it be different now than it had been? Yeah, very much so. Um, I okay. think it's, number one, I would be a lot more intentional with it, you know, because, look, the thing with form sometimes is like you start to think of it as like your own movement in individualistic, right? Because you're just doing these, you know, uh, 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 let's say in like a, like a, basic like wushu form you know 
and and you can see that sometimes like you know you start to get into that because you're, you're rehearsing these moves again and again and again just to do this form but one of the things that doing um uh well really also any if you if you actually go into like a fight or a competition or um any any kind of um especially the stunt work you start to link that the two human beings are always in in relation two human beings are always you're always moving because of another thing so it's a push and pull of it that 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 i had that i had really sort of gotten from 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 doing the stunt work that sort of like really made it made it very 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 visceral mm. and apparent to me because it's like you're always in relation and if you're doing it right you know like even with the forms um this movement is for a certain reason you know <laughs> so <laughs> and we we and, and I, i'm guilty to to admit that, that 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 i'm guilty of like forgetting that sometimes because you're you're by yourself right yeah yeah are you always this thoughtful? Yeah, you, I, I have. You, been, I you have sound been, like a philosopher in the way that you're talking about. Man, this. I have been accused of overthinking sometimes, of course, but <laughs> but I, I'm I'm very thoughtful, dude. Yeah, and and I'm I, I think it's a curiosity for me. You know, I'm always curious. I I I just my brain. I don't know why. I just get lost in things. You've you know? always been like that. I've always been like that. Yeah. Okay. Were you the the daydreaming sort of kid that the parents had to shake because you were off in your own world or or deep in a book or luckily they didn't shake me so i was just stayed in that daydream you know okay. um, my grandma yeah. actually told me just a few days ago when i was talking to her she was like yeah ever since you were a baby you just wouldn't go to sleep sometimes you would just sit there looking at your hands <laughs> you know, like <laughs> counting your hands literally and i was like are you serious She's like, yeah, yeah. I had to like force you to go to sleep. And then when you start to go to sleep, you just go into a deep sleep. But if you wouldn't, you know, like sit there for hours, just like looking at things, you know, oh. um, I guess it's just sort of natural. Okay. What did you enjoy in school? I, my first thing that, that, that came from me was science, man. I mean, it's just that curiosity. Okay. Like I remember I would go to the library and like get like 20 books. And I would read one of them any time when I went to the bathroom. <laughs> like that, was, that was the ritual, you know, just like devour anything about anything. I'm not fascinated. Just, just hungry for knowledge. Yeah. Just, just, just infinitely curious. I'm fascinated by everything, honestly. I'm fascinated by other people's lives. Not so much my, my own as an actor. I'm, I'm always mm. like curious about other people's stuff. So then are, what about biographies? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and, and Ooh. sometimes even, well, biography, you know, um, one of the first, you know, I think for any martial artist, like you, I think most martial artists have always been somewhat fascinated by Bruce Lee. Right. That was always like yeah. a childhood idol of mine. But, um, I get fascinated by the biographies of like, I, it's funny that you say it's like, you know, interesting things on the edge. I'm always like really fascinated by like, uh, lives of people on the ragged edge of life and i'm talking about like um just 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 they, they don't necessarily have to be famous like i have a a a a a friend in new york and he's a professional drag queen and i'm like what is that life like you know let me let me just sit with you all day i can just like be be, be fascinated by that you know or or like the cop or the guy who works at several of them what's his whole life like i'm i'm, I'm fascinated by that and do you ever take that fascination the next step? Would you spend a week working at that 7-Eleven or, or learn how to do drag and step out on a stage? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially, you know, it's very helpful for my job because <laughs> it's, it's sort of like yeah. we can get paid to do that, you know? Um, we, uh, uh, that, that actually, like, we're actually, I'm actually in talking with a friend right now we're 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 putting together a project that it, it, it actually has to do with the world of drag and so that might that, that could be a role for me in the future so um nice. i would literally i was telling him i was like i need about half of the year about like four or five months to i'm gonna go there and just sort of immerse myself and do that, that it's a fascinating culture 
fascinating. Oh, and, and and I take that for for I try to take that for every every job that I do. Mm. You know, yeah. Well, here here's the here's the question. I kind I kind of have to ask you. There there's there are a few cliche ones that are going to pop up. I suspect in everything. Oh, please, and so yeah. as we're talking about this, if you could play anybody, who would that be? Oh wow. Um, that's like asking a, a mom who's their favorite child, you know, <laughs> like, I, Jesus, there's like a whole list. Of well, you can it. ask that question of moms as long as the kids aren't around and you're yeah, not recording yeah, exactly, them. Exactly. Because I, I, I've learned that a lot of parents do have favorite children. It's hard to admit, isn't it? <laughs> it I mean, I grew up a single child, so, you know, I, 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 I was the, the favorite and the least favorite, depending on what kind of terrible things I was doing. So I, I didn't have to reconcile that. And it was seriously, it was like five years ago, I heard a mom say, oh no, we definitely have favorites. Oh, wow. Well, I, I think for her favorite role right now, I mean, it always changes moment, you know, like year by year. But right now, the first thing that pops up in my mind is, well, two things. Uh, obviously, a, a, a huge dream of mine would be to do a, like a Bruce Lee biopic. Mm. I mean that 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 terrifies me because you know it's been done and tried so many times that I was like, man, to do something like that really, really, really deeply and well and inhabited, that that would be insane. Um, also, um, I have been fascinated. One of my dream roles is uh, there's this play by David Henry Wong called M Butterfly, and it's basically in a nutshell, it's about um, a romantic relationship between a French diplomat in the 1930s and a Chinese opera singer who he believes to be a woman because she, the man plays, you know, in the Peking opera, the, the men play the women's roles too. And so it's, it's like, I, I, and it would be the role of um, Song Li Ling, the, 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 the opera singer, just because it's so fascinating. It just, mm. for me, transformation is everything, man, transformation. So the the makeup, the costumes, you you dig that side of it. I, I dig. I've, it all. I've heard some actors don't. Yeah, that's that's not me, man. I, because it gives you it gives me so much. You know, it's a tool uh, to 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 tell the story, to share the experience, to really dig in. And also, it makes you feel different. I mean, look, like put it simply, you feel different when you're wearing a suit versus like a hoodie and sweats. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and if you let it, yeah, like that, that, that's, that's, that's just an extension of that. Like, you just feel different. You are different. And then all of a sudden, you're just a different you. Hmm. Yeah. You mentioned playing Bruce Lee and, and the, the pressure that <sighs> that would put on you. Do you feel any of that now, given that it's, you know, his daughter's involved yeah. and it's his concept that you're working on with Warrior? Do you, do you mean, do I feel any pressure uh, being yeah. on Warrior? Yeah. You know, believe it or not, no, because of, it, okay. was, it, it was, it was, you know, she was our executive producer, right? And and she is like the legend. She's the best. She's she's amazing. But she has so much love for, for this project. And everybody had this sort of pure love for this show when we were working on it. It was literally a labor of love from the top to the bottom. Mm. I'm talking about even the drivers were like really into it to go to work every day. <laughs> nice. And, nice. And, and and it's rare that you find that. So because we came from it from like sort of pure intention of place to really do the best we could do, um, I didn't really feel any sort of like pressure to sort of live up to anything. And, and and also that that also stemmed from from Shannon herself. She was like, you know, we're we're gonna make, you know, this was my few. She was like, this is my father's idea, but but you know, he only did a treatment of it. And now we're gonna like take it and run, you know, and and to to to, to also like honor him and honor his legacy and 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 to to build off of that story. So so we mm. we sort of made it our own, you know. It's nice that you have that, I guess, that freedom. Because when we when we talk about Bruce Lee, here we are, you know, so many years after he passed, yeah. and he's still the most influential, recognizable martial arts figure in the world. I mean, that legacy, it's just yeah. it's 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 almost religious. 
Oh, absolutely. In, 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 yeah. in the standing. I mean, we, we could draw a correlation to someone else who uh, has, has, or several who have filled large roles after their passing. And I'm I not going to directly draw that equa- equation, but yeah, it's on the spectrum. Yeah, it's in it, that direction. It, and, 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 and for me, it has double layer, you know, as an Asian person growing up, you know, overseas, um, as an Asian American growing up here. When I was a kid, I remember, and I told Shannon this to her face. I was like, your father, seeing your father made me for the first time in America be proud to be an Asian man. How fucking cool is that? You know, like that, 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 yeah. You get chill bumps talking about it. What was it like for you getting the opportunity to tell her that? I got a, I got so emotional. I, 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 I made a little recording of myself and I just remember getting super emotional. It was, it was sort of like, I mean, like, you know, in the moment, it's almost surreal. You know, you can't even feel anything. It's like, it's so surreal. And then after it hits you and it was so funny talking to her and you know and she's so down to earth and so loving and so wonderful of a person <laughs> it's just so funny how normal she made it she was just like yeah dad was like this and you know ah fucking dad was like that and i was like <laughs> dude you shannon dad was fucking bruce lee bro. <laughs> like, and so so it was like that sense of surrealness you know so yeah i i I just remember getting really emotional afterward i was like i can't believe that happened it's 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 not often we get to meet our heroes and and it is you you didn't you didn't get to meet him directly but it you got probably the second yeah you you got you got in a sense you got to do something that few of us ever get to do which is to take something that was important to one of our heroes and work with it, help bring it to life to help express that vision and to be involved with mm -hmm. the person who clearly is the keeper of the Bruce Lee vision in, in, in Shannon and what an amazing job she's doing. Yeah. I feel so grateful. Wow. Yeah. Gratitude to the max, you know, and then I got to do that back to back actually, because Mulan was something that as a Chinese person, we grew up with that story since childhood. Mm. <laughs> to do it, you know, like like to do those two things back to back. I mean, people are like, "Man, you're just a happy dude." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm happy." You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know I have a lot to be grateful for. I really for sure. do. And 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 you know, and I never want to forget that. You know, so it's 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 like what to some of the great experiences of my life, and I'll remember it to the day I die. Mulan has this history, you know. I mean, I, I'm. You talked about the story, yeah. As a kid, you know, the, the the Disney film, the legacy of that, and how important that was to so many people because of the story it was telling and the culture that it was coming out of. Yeah. At a time when those stories weren't really told in mainstream media. Yeah, we're we're seeing such this this amazing transition point just over the last few years. Just in the time of this this podcast, we went from no leading Asian Asian American actors mm-hmm. in Hollywood to quite a few shows, movies. Mm-hmm. Crazy Rich Asians did amazing at the box office, and it seemed like it just blew the doors open. Mm-hmm. And we have been working towards that, you know, we're, 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 we're getting there. Um, my, my, honestly, my, uh, sort of dream and end game would be like, you know, this is not just, this is not an Asian actor or this is not, you know, an Asian writer or something. It's just a writer who happens to be Asian. That that's the end game, isn't it? You know, it's just like, this is another person. And, and the more we do what we do, the more we, are sort of visible the more it becomes normalized and i think that's of all things that's that's for all things isn't it yeah yeah we have a a saying <clears throat> on this show that martial arts styles are more alike than they are different and yeah we can focus on the differences and we can fight about it we can argue and and point and people fingers love and, to argue about that don't oh, they? it drives me nuts <laughs> oh, so does it drive you, me nuts why can't you appreciate and just do your thing 
or why can't we compare notes and get better because of it? That, that's that's right. And I, I think it's real, it's like fusion yeah. cuisine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand because like, you know, you talk about like mixed martial artists, like, you know, um, I don't think there's a mixed martial artist out there that's not appreciative of like, I'm talking like a professional, like, you know, fighter. They're like, well, yeah, you know, what can I learn? What can I learn? That's that's a true artist way, man. You know, they're like Bruce Lee. You know, if you go back to Bruce Lee, you know, he studied fencing, boxing, these things. You know, right. like and dance. Y- you talked about it as an actor, as your craft. Yeah, I'll step in and do drag. Yeah, I'll work at a Seven Eleven. You want to immerse yourself, so you have, I would assume, as much material to pull from when you yes. create and, and and live these characters. Yes, because every little thing. There, there's a saying in Zen Buddhism that's, uh, that I like to always kind of remember. It's it, it, it basically says, "How you do anything is how you do everything," mm. right? And because because it really is the truth. Because look, if you one of I'll make an example. One of uh, one of my favorite books that I love to read is the Book of Five Rings, Miyamoto Masashi, right? Yeah, uh, if if listeners, if you're a martial artist, you haven't read that, you should. <laughs> um, this man starts off this book by saying, "My name is Miyamoto Musashi, and I'm a samurai, and I have killed 61 men in single combat." And this is my treatise on fighting. <laughs> and, 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 but if you really look at it, he goes really, really deep because he basically is sort of saying, you know, all art affects other art. And like, that's why a samurai must study painting or something else. You know, you can learn a lot about the way of seeing a world that could actually influence your art. And, 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 and so, you know, I might be getting a little, it would stop me if I'm getting a little too philosophical. If you're like, you know what, Chen, pull it back. You're going on to this like sort of. I, I don't think you can get too philosophical for me. Okay, great. <laughs> there, 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 there are listeners out there laughing at what you just said, because that's, this is the stuff I love to talk about. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, 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 it's like, you know, when you really deep dive into something, you know, you really deep dive into something, you start to like get influenced by like other things, even the, the, the what, what do they call it? Like you, you, could, you can learn a lot about like, like the, let's say, let's take an example. Like somebody was designing a plane. They were, Leonardo da Vinci was looking at the flights of birds to design his flying machine. Just to let you see the world in different ways. And that, that is, that, 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 that to me is being that that's to me is having an artist's heart an artist's soul yeah do you dabble do, do you work in other art forms i i well to, you know what to be honest like that is something i i should take my own of. i i i should i should 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 do more of um, sometimes i get so myopic with just like the acting and the craft and all these things but luckily our art is sort of by design you sort of have to learn from life because we are you know you're just trying to be this other person in a, in a different life so so we get a lot of that from um like for me just working on a role you know um so, 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 so for, you know, to, to really answer your question, I don't dabble in currently in, in other art, but, but I've really, I, I used to want to be a painter. If I wasn't an actor, I would have been mm. either a painter or a soldier. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're not glossing over that. That's, that's about as, as distant a split as you get. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. How, how, what, why? Why do I want to be a soldier? Painter, yeah. A painter or a soldier? Yeah, I, I've always loved art. I, I mean, I, I remember just drawing and painting since I was very, very young. So, you know, my, again, my grandmother used to say, like, from since you were two, you would just, like, sit there and just draw things, the things you see. Just a whole book of them. And, and, and it's always been something that has been really close to me. Um, but to, to answer your question of why I wanted to be a soldier, um, that was one of my dreams. I didn't know what I wanted to do after high school. So I actually was going to enlist in the military. One of them, my, actually one of my big regrets that I didn't, uh, in my life. Uh, I, I have a, I have a military family. Um, you know, the Chinese military, but they're, they're a military family. Many, many of my relatives were in the military and just have that background. So it's always uh, sort of in my bones, you know? Um, 
I can't, I can't sit here and explain exactly why I feel that way. I just always just had a calling to it. It, It's funny because as you're just, as I'm thinking about it, as you're describing it, acting sort of seems like a a combination of the two. It's the structure Mm. of the military that you talked about really appreciating. And it's the creative side. It's the expression. It's the space in between. Yeah, Whereas yeah, painting, so. you know, any constraints that you have, you they would be self-imposed. And so they're not really constraints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think but acting, right. here's your structure. Mm-hmm. Now find your space within it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I never thought about it like that. I guess you're right. What do you think you would have painted? If we, if we, if we were on a very different style of, of podcast and you would gone off you'd become a painter and a a celebrated painter and we'd be here talking about your paintings what would they be of what would the subject be um one of the things that draws me to a piece of art is uh, a sense of uh uh rawness and when i say rawness i mean like um something like uh picasso's guernica i don't know if you've ever seen that painting it's Mm -hmm. just like a it's so raw of just emotion in, in the moment, motion just plastered onto the fucking canvas. And it, it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect, it, it, it expressionistic sort of, um, um, abstract things like really call to me very, very much. Um, just something that, that has to do with emotion in motion. Does that make sense? I don't know. If it that, does. But, it yeah. does. For anybody who's seen it. And, uh, I, I just made a note on the, the piece of paper I keep by me. We're going to, we're going to drop a yeah. image of that in the show notes. Guernica. Yeah. I mean, like if you watch that, you're just like, well, this guy feels really strongly about something. And everything <laughs> in the thing is, is just like a very, very, very raw, pure expression of emotion. And, and it's just so pure. So, so stuff like that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't do like life like stuff to be honest. Mm. Um, just really all about, um, how I feel in the in the moment, responding to to however I, I am in life, you know, right at that moment. Maybe it's Would something see, I'll pick up later on in my in my life. I, I hope so. I hope so. I, I you know when I, when I think about actors who paint, the one that's coming to mind is is Jim Carrey, oh, and yeah. I don't know if you've seen any of his work, but it's amazing. I mean, he's really like gone deep on some of it, and it sounds like it's been really cathartic. Oh yeah, yeah. I think you know that's the thing with you know we as actors. It's, it's, again, it's sort of like we, we, we are, we are, we have that constraint, right? We have, and then when you, when you get to paint, it's like, you have no constraint. This is just you. You can just really express mm-hmm. how you want to express. And that, that, I think, think we, we need that, you know? Would you consider yourself a, a sensitive or, a, or emotional person? Yo, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> Max, somebody, I had an ex-girlfriend tell me she was like, you're like a hurricane, you know, like, like mm. being with you is like being in a hurricane. It's a little overwhelming sometimes. I was like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's just sort of how I am. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, not a lot of filter going on. Mm, I can't say not a lot of filter. I, I just feel really, really, really deeply, I think deeply, too, mm. you know, and, 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 and stuff takes me really, really, and, I'm just sort of really sensitive, sensitive to things, you know. Like I can walk into a room, I can feel the vibe and feel somebody's energy immediately. And I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Some people are just wired that way. It's uh, yeah. it's something I can relate to. Mm. So the question, and I and I asked this from the position of someone who knows this is a question that has an answer. How do you cope with that? How do you handle walking into a room and feeling the the negativity? Maybe of someone stewing in the corner or I I lean into it and I, I allow mm. that. I'm like, you know, that's how you I'm not gonna you look, you can't change how you feel in the moment. You can just hold space for that. That that I think that that's a big uh one of the big, one of the big cornerstones of good acting is listening, you know, listening and what really, you know, really accepting what the other person's getting in the moment and, and, and they're just going with that. 
you know, and, and, and that, that to me is like, you know, you say the word cope, I don't think there's the word cope. I just sort of like dance with it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sort of, sort of just like allow and accept it. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. It does. I don't know if it's going to make sense to everybody else, but I'm sure at least for some. People are probably going to be listening to this and be like, this, this dude is like, what is this guy on? <laughs> like, like... <laughs> well, you know, let, let's, let's put it this way. They've, most of them have been putting up with me for years. So yeah. if they can, if they can handle that, they're probably, they're probably good with this. This is. I hope you don't get you know, a bunch of drop offs and subscribers after listening to mine, my episode. <laughs> like, you know what, Shannon? Here, <laughs> here's the beauty of this show. And here's why I don't care. This show was set up with a concept around what I wanted. It was the show I wanted to listen to because it didn't exist. Mm. And it was bringing on martial artists from all over, all styles, all usage of martial arts in their day-to-day lives and having them tell stories. That's exactly what you're doing. Oh, I love that. I love that. Martial arts is, is, as far as I'm concerned, the most amazing tool for personal growth that we have available. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you're talking about how it's led to all these things. And and so much of what you're talking about, even when you're not talking about martial arts, you could look at from a martial arts perspective. And yeah, that's like, what's beautiful to me. That, because it. it's the martial arts, you know, the art of exactly of, of the human expression, human movement. And, and art is uh, the noun. Art is the noun. Yeah. Art is the 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 that like like again it goes back to like Miyamoto Musashi. All art affects other art, you know. All things, you know. What are your goals? What what fires you up when you get up day to day and you say, you know, I am super pumped about achieving this, accomplishing this, of learning this. Yeah. What are the, what are those things? I think in in the same way that many, you know, let's say like a martial artist, like a, they, they, they want to just really become great at what they do, right? And to, to mastery, mastery. I think that's really what drove somebody like Bruce Lee. Mm. You now he just wants to be the, 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 his own mastery of what he does. It's a little bit difficult to put into words, but um, it, it really is that that concept of like, you know what, I just want to be great at what I do. And and I've always been sort of wired that way. I, I remember when I was a struggling actor, man, just trying to make it, just trying to keep a roof over my head. I became a bartender. And that's an art too, you know, like cocktailia, you know, making making drinks. Yeah. That's, that's art. And, and it has its own techniques. And I just remember being fascinated, just deep diving the things to become great at what you do. And then that, that is sort of the journey in itself. You know, that, that is, that's, I know it's a bit of a Zen kind of like way of going through the world. And, and I can't deny that. Of course, yeah, you want to, you want to like have a successful career. You want to, you know, make money. You want to, <clears throat> you know, you want to do these things that that's important to you or whatever, but, but whatever it is, it's like, you know, you want to do the best you can at, at something. Mm. And, and a big part of that it, for me is like, I, if, if you told me, you know what, Chen, I, I, you're going to go off and like do a million like huge films and you're going to have a lot of money and all this success, I'd be awesome. But then if I'm also not really wonderful at what I do, <clears throat> that is acting, hmm. I would be like, oh, I would look back on my life and be like, man, that 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 is an incomplete life. Yeah. yeah. Mastery over let's say broad results, you know, mastery over participation, I guess. is a, a Yeah. Like the mastery, mastery over the external, but <clears throat> non mastery over the internal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to ask you about bartending because that, that's a subject that hasn't come up before. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Every, every bartender I, I've known has a, a spirit, a particular spirit that they <laughs> love working with, you yeah. know, and, and like, one I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of actually two that I know, and for both of them, it's Hendrix Gin. I'm so happy you said Gin, because that was going to be my answer, Gin, <laughs> Gin. And um, by the way, anybody in that that uh, plans to go to South Africa, South Africa has some of the world's best gins. Not a very well known fact. Some of the world's best gins. I don't know why. Maybe it's the mm. You know the the British influence or, or or the European influence, but like 
it, it, they it's got like dozens and dozens of local gins like that 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 also use like botanicals that are native to like the southern tip of africa that you can't find anywhere uh-huh. else in the world it's it's fascinating now, but, now i have to I, I don't do this often i have to brag a little bit on my uh, local okay. area yeah, yeah, yeah because you know here i i'm in i'm in the woods of vermont we have the smallest capital city in all of the U.S., the only one without a McDonald's. It's 8,000 people. You can walk up and just like hang out and eat lunch on the Capitol oh, steps. Wow. It's that small. And you know what else happens to exist in Montpelier, Vermont right now? What's that? What has just been named the best gin. Bar Hill Gin just got a perfect score. You're, you're in, kidding. W- no, in whatever the relevant... Uh, periodical is I, I ju- this I just saw this. In I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. You're even taking notes. I'm gonna take notes from myself. <laughs> I need that bar hill. They, they yeah. use local honey. Like it's just it, it is. It's an amazing spirit. It's a cool company. Oh. And and they're let's see, two four seven miles away. Wow, wow. I'm, 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 okay, I'm going to, I'm writing, yep, I'm writing this down. <laughs> Try it and then let me know. I want to, I want to hear what you think. I, I will, I will. It's good stuff. It's really uh, good stuff. Yeah, like, you know, it's so funny. It's bartending, actually, believe it or not, bartending gave me a lot uh, to my life, you know, like also just the way of looking at things because it's really is this craft. I was really, really, really fortunate to be able to say I was really well trained. I, uh, the people that sort of started this whole cocktail movement in New York, uh, at Milk and Honey, you know, please don't tell these, these like cocktail mixology bars and stuff. The people that advised them, they, they, they gave me a lot of training. And, and so, so I really like got to learn just the history of it and the, like the, 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 why things are like this, why things are like that. Um, yeah, we, I don't know. I could geek out all day. That could be a whole nother show, but like I, I, I could geek out all day about, um, but, but yeah, d- definitely gin, man. Gin is uh, like, if you really know how to use it, it, it just makes the best drinks. I think it just makes it's, the best drinks. It's a very versatile option. Yeah. When, when you were, when you were bartending, uh-huh. I'm sure you it had exchanges with, especially if it was in New York, some of just the strangest, in, most interesting, colorful people you could imagine. Do you ever refer back to elements of them in your acting? Uh, I don't know if I do it consciously. I just know that, like, man, I I I, I experienced a lot. This um, is like New York City, uh, you know, nightlife. Like, you name it, I've seen it or done it. You know, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like, sure. Like, I'm there's, sure. There's, yes, there's some crazy stuff that happens. You know, <laughs> it's the craziest city on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, me too. Yeah, I, I agree. So, what's next? You know, I'm I'm noticing the time. I, w- I want to make sure I'm respectful of yours, and we can start winding down. But you know, what's what's coming for you? What are you like? Are there projects you can talk about? Well, currently, 2020 has been a little bit of a weird year, <laughs> uh, to say the that's least. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our industry, you know, was shut down. For, yeah. I mean, it's just now starting to gear back up, and you know, we're getting back into auditions and stuff. So, so it was sort of like they put put the pause button mm-hmm. on it. Um, as far as projects are concerned, you know, I'm just taking a look at some scripts right now. Um, really, just just auditioning and and really uh, wanting to land another great great project. And I'm willing to wait for the right one. It, it doesn't, it, you know, I don't just want to be like just just give me anything. Um, I spent much of the, the quarantine and, and um, just really deep diving into my craft. It's like, like, you know, it, it, it would just be like, Hey, listen, this is a martial arts show. You know, martial artists is like, they, they're always working on their own, their game in a way they're working on their, their technique. They're working on something to, to, to improve themselves in their art. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's been the majority of my focus lately it's just been like just really deep diving into into my acting craft even more um and can, also can you speak a little on what that looks like okay uh, uh, you know just the something. Some, some something like a concrete yeah. example um yeah yeah working on your memory my memory mm. um like i would just memorize like pages and pages like listen like 
that that's taken for granted sometimes as an actor. You're like, well, you got to learn lines, but how many things do you know by heart? You know, like how, especially if you have something like an audition, our turnarounds is like, you know, you get the audition two days before it's due, you know, mm. or you have to go in for it. And, and for me, it's like, I always knew that like, oh, my memory needs a little work because sometimes I'm a little slow, you know? And, 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 and so it would literally be like, you know, every single day I would like memorize a poem or, or, or like a monologue or, or something, you know, and, and just, just improve that aspect. So that, that's like a small portion of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's great. I appreciate that. You, you know, I, I, I had suspicions, mm -hmm. but most of us aren't actors. Yeah. You know, and, and there's, 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 there's so many things that we, I, I could get into, but, but at the, at the end of the day, it's just like, there's, it's sort of like an athlete, you know, like LeBron mm -hmm. James would be like spending time on his post game, you know, post up game, you know, and something like that. It's like, well, what, what little details do you can, can we always improve? That, you know, to go back to another question that you asked is like, that, that's what gets me up every day. I'm like, what can I improve today? You know, like, <laughs> that, that, that's it's, what it's that, fires me that up. quest for more, that, that growth, that knowledge. You're yeah. a sponge. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh -huh. so hopefully, you know, um, as I'm pretty sure this, this next year is going to something, something I'll be probably be working on uh something in the next year so that that is we'll have to touch back on a later date okay. sounds good well i always give the guests the opportunity to pick the final words you know it's not a, it's not a question it's what do you want to leave the the audience with what thoughts or wisdom or instruction or whatever you know what what, what do you want to tell them as we head out to the outro. Well, number one, I, I want to thank the guests for, for your time. And I'm, I'm so grateful for how much you just love what you do. You know, if you're listening to this, this program, it probably means that you love martial arts very, very much. And you have an interest in it. And, and that's something to be nourished. That's something to be, um, to, to, to keep falling in love with you know that that passion for what we do that passion for for growing that passion for improving ourselves that's what really it, it, that's the stuff of life in it that's what like bruce lee would wake up every day to do improve his body improve his art improve his mind improve something and 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 that right there is like you know if you have a passion man do it all the way every single day and you know even even when times are hard just know that 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 right there is what is the stuff of life and it's it's you are deserving you are enough and you're worth it to pursue what your heart desires i told you that was a good one i told you we went deep i told you we went broad if we were to make a list of the number of topics covered in a given martial arts radio episode, I've got a feeling this one would be at the top for the number of different things we talked about. And I loved it. We heard how much he loved learning and experiencing and, and checking out new things. And that really came through. I've got a feeling that he and I, or he and anyone, could talk about anything and he would have something to add. And I just find that to be so admirable. I had a lot of fun with this one, and it's due to who he is. So, Chen, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for going deep. And thanks for your trust with this interview. If you want to know more, if you want to check out the show notes where we've got some photos and links, stuff that we talked about today, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, episode 562. And while you're over there, you can sign up for the newsletter. You can check out other episodes. You can find a link back to whistlekick.com. There's just a, a ton of stuff if you want to go deeper with the things that we make. And if you find something that we make that you want to buy, Podcast 15 gets you 15% off. Don't forget, you could also leave a review or help us out with the Patreon. And if you see somebody out there rocking something with Whistlekick on it, say hello. Let them know how you know about Whistlekick. They can tell you the same. Maybe you'll make a new friend or a training partner. If you want to follow us on social media, we're at Whistlekick. And if you want to write to me personally, jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's it for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Bye.